We're the next leaders and this is our pitch for a TV show. Softtech Designs is a small software development company with business operations in several states. Our business objectives are to move our current customers away from in-house to cloud-based technology and attract new customers by targeting those looking to save money on training solutions, especially those who've already adopted the use of technology in other aspects of their business while increasing our revenue. Our end goals are to provide access to training materials from anywhere, anytime, on any medium, and to limit the use of our resources for on-site maintenance while employing easier upgrades. The aim of our show is to depict the different role a manager plays through employee interaction while navigating the day-to-day -day business transactions of the organization. Two teams with different managers will use different management styles to navigate organizational changes. And managers will encounter ethical dilemmas, differences of opinions, decision-making conflicts, and barriers to change. No doubt, this will redefine the way they work as a team. The organizational structure is flat, which is the case for smaller organizations. It is highly decentralized, which means decision-making is pushed down from upper to mid slash lower level managers, which sometimes blurs the lines of authority. Its informal nature allows for a wide span of control, but it also affects the unity of command. So, who's our target market? Small to mid-sized companies in need of training solutions, where? St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Tampa, and smaller surrounding cities, why? Classroom training takes employees away from work for hours at a time. Employees must commute to training or employers must pay vendors to come to the office. This can be very costly and it decreases productivity. How? Through the use of remote access, Training is more mobile, matching the mobility of the workforce, and customers can store large volumes of data, even entire systems remotely. Some of the management concepts we'll see includes organizational change driven by technology, resistance to change and implementation, the strategic management concept, and the SWOT analysis. We'll see the advantages and disadvantages of group versus individual decision making and the bounded rationality versus the classical decision making model. Managerial ethics, including ethical decision making using the utilitarian versus the moral rights approach. The general idea for the show is to depict the different roles a manager plays through interaction with different associates while navigating the day-to-day -day business transitions that occurs in any organization. The software development company has decided to implement a new technology, cloud-based systems designs. Some of the features of this technology include remote access, which is essential with businesses becoming more mobile, and the storage of large volumes of data, even entire systems remotely. With this new technology, the company can advance its development strategy and attract business from larger corporations. To bring the management concepts to life, two teams with different managers will use different management styles to navigate organizational changes that may redefine the way the team works together. While navigating these changes, the managers encounter ethical dilemma among their teams that they must work together to resolve. Most of the scenes will take place in a typical office setting, but in one scene we will see the characters interact with each other at a company-wide conference. This is a classic example of innovation demanding change. While attending a company-wide conference, managers Mel and Sharon, who work out of the smaller St. Petersburg office in Florida, maintaining training systems for local businesses learn about the changes. Mel and Sharon engages with teams to discuss the changes and their plans on implementation. Much to Mel's disappointment, most of the other managers decided to work on the details among themselves without the input of their direct reports. After the conference, Mel made the decision to inform her team of the changes, get their feedback, and report her findings to her manager even though her peers disapprove.
Upon their return from the conference Mel learns from Sharon that her associate she conspired with Jane to misrepresent the facts and steal company time by sharing login information to conceal tardiness. Sharon believes both employees must be terminated but Mel is sympathetic to Shay and wants to reprimand her based on the severity of her participation, which she does not believe constitutes termination. Sharon proceeds with termination while Mel puts Shay on a corrective action plan. This situation further complicates the manager's working relationship. The implementation was successful among Mel's team, however. Sharon lost two more team members and with no time to hire and train new associates, her efforts were unsuccessful. She was fired and Mel became the manager of both teams, with the option to hire an assistant. Shay was passed over for the promotion to assistant team lead and someone from outside the company was hired. There are seven main characters in our TV show. The first characters you will meet are from Team A, beginning with Mel. Mel is the protagonist and the team lead of Team A. She leads by example. She is fair, approachable, and very supportive. Like everything else in her life, she takes pride in her work. To the end, she is very conscientious about fulfilling the interpersonal, informational, and decision-making roles as dictated by her interaction with her direct reports, peers, and manager. There is open communication amongst her team as she uses collaborative decision-making in the planning and implementation of new policies. She also uses a SWOT analysis before making big decisions. The next character is Shay, and she is also a team member of Team A. Shay performs her job well, but she has personal health problems that cause her to take time off from work. She wants to take her manager's job someday, so she takes on additional responsibility, works well with others, and stays up to date with policies. She is a strong team player, but sometimes makes decisions that are unethical in order to try and help her team succeed. The other member from Team A is Joy. Joy is an introvert, very technical and analytical, but has no aspirations to be a leader. She is very independent and prefers to work alone. She is content in her current position and has no desire to advance in the company. She would rather stick with the job duties she already knows and have guidance from upper management rather than being in a position of authority. The next characters you will be introduced to are members of Team B. Sharon is the leader of Team B, and she consistently challenges Mel's management style. She uses a do-as-I-say, not do-as-I-do type of approach. She views her team as her tools to success and nothing more, which is reflected in the level of unhappiness and high turnover rate among her team. Sharon uses an authoritative management style and feels that team leads should be responsible for all strategic planning and are the only ones capable enough to make qualified decisions. Another member from Team B is Joe. Joe is a subject matter expert and he aims to please Sharon. He says yes to all of her demands and works tirelessly to earn her approval. He has goals of moving into a leadership role, but he is not taken seriously by his peers because he has no backbone or integrity. Sharon often takes advantage of his willingness to help and she delegates her own work onto him to complete, but she is never satisfied with his performance and gives him negative feedback. The next member from Team B is Jane. Jane is very unhappy with her job, so she does the minimum that is required and consistently finds ways to manipulate the system. She is very good friends with Shay on Team A. She is also attending school in hopes of moving up in her company or finding a better paying job. Jane wants to have a management title, but she is not willing to put in the hard work that it takes to get into a higher position. Last but not least, meet Bob. Bob is the regional manager for Florida. Mel and Sharon report directly to him. Bob is a strong leader who the team leads both enjoy working for. They both look up to him and work hard to try and gain his acceptance and appreciation. Bob is very organized and innovative, and he is constantly working on ways to make improvements within the company to ensure it is successful. He is Mel's role model, so she takes tips from his management style and incorporates them into her own. One day, she would like to advance into a position such as his. Next up, previews of our episodes. During the regional company conference in Atlanta, Georgia, the team leads from Central Florida Regional Office of St. Petersburg, Mal and Sharon, learn about new technology that the company plans to implement as soon as possible in order to maximize revenue and cut back on expenses. 
Their regional manager, Bob, informs them that the new technology will allow the company to broaden their customer base while increasing their revenues and cutting back on expenses. Bob, the southern regional manager, has a plan to upgrade the company software to a cloud-based system that will allow the company to offer better products to their customers, as well as offering better training tools to its employees. Bob instructs the team leaders that in order to fully establish this new goal, each team will be responsible for analyzing their local offices and their customer base in order to establish the best way to implement the new technology and software. Bob instructs the teams that they already have the technology and software available, so it is a race between each team in order to find the best solution that is structurally suitable for the company as a whole. Mal and Sharon decide to plan their next step. Mal decides to use the SWOT methodology. This will allow her to better analyze the regional position of the company so she can best formulate an action plan. She decides to follow through with the SWOT method by including her team to better analyze the company. Sharon decides to take a separate approach. Sharon decides to delegate tasks to her team in order to achieve the company's strategic objective of implementing the new technology. Episode 2 covers the various steps of the SWOT method as Mel plans the implementation of a new technological method for her company. Based on Mel's analysis using SWOT, she decides to prioritize her tasks. Research recent changes made within the company to assess where the company stands. Research other companies that have tried to implement similar technology and asses their hurdles. Administer the implementation of focus groups within the company to maximize efficiency. Implement deadlines to maintain an adequate timeline. Asses the team's weaknesses to properly coordinate necessary cross-training. Assign mandatory roles to key team players. Organize bi-weekly meetings to maintain focus. SWOT stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and threats. Used to analyze a business climate or for possible challenges and solutions a company may face. Can be used to prioritize tasks in the implementation of new systems within a company. Systemically used to allow a company to understand its position within the market. Episode 3 covers the strategic objectives initiative of the company as outlined by Sharon. Sharon has taken a rather different approach than Mal. Rather, Sharon has delegated to her team to find the company's strengths and weaknesses themselves. However, Sharon does not divulge all the necessary information to her team. Due to Sharon's ambiguous nature, her team leads Joe and Shay take various different routes. As such, in Episode 3, Sharon's Strategic Objectives Initiative has not worked for her because she has not properly delegated to her team the company's focus area and the strategic objectives that are necessary to accomplish. The Strategic Objectives Initiative can be thought of like a pyramid. The company's vision is on top, but it is built upon the company's values. The company's values is built upon various focus areas the company wishes to focus on. It asks, what is important to the company? The company's focus area is built upon various strategic objectives, such as, what is the company trying to achieve in the short term, medium term, and long term? The company's strategic objectives is built upon many short-term goals and accomplishments, such as an increase in guest count at a company. Mel and Sharon begin the implementation of the company's new technology. Mel has found that her SWOT analysis has been beneficial to her team. Mel is able to better implement the new technology because she took to the time to analyze how the new technology would best fit within the current company. Mel is patiently waiting on Sharon and her team to implement their new technology, as Sharon's technology is dependent on Mel's new technology. Sharon's team, however, is unaware that the whole company is waiting on them to implement their new technology. As such, they are focused on interviewing their customers. This is partly Sharon's fault as she has not detailed to her team the importance of their technology. Episode shows how the SWOT method was successful, whereas, the strategic objectives set out by Sharon were not adequately executed, as as such, have failed the company.
This is a great example of how managers must act decisively in order to achieve the best results. Future episodes will use management concepts on ethical decision making, where we'll see both managers deciding on the best resolution to an ethical dilemma. We'll see a comparison between the utilitarian approach, which focuses on the consequences, versus the moral rights approach, where actions are examined based on their wrongness or rightness. Technology creates a dynamic environment, which causes uncertainty and demands change. We'll see how both managers handle the change process, overcome resistance, and the choices they make going into the implementation phases. Finally, we'll reflect on what the managers did well, whether they were ready for change, and how well they performed under pressure. What we have done so far, so far, we have created a show outline and with it, we developed a storyline and plot for our TV show. We have also created and developed our characters. With all of this, we were able to create four episode outlines. We have completed our midterm PowerPoint slides, our midterm video presentation, and we have completed all of our work on time so far. What we still need to do? We will need to create outlines for our future episodes and then we will record all of our episodes. Once we are finished recording, we will be able to perfect our video by doing some post-recording editing. We still need to work on our management booklet, our final presentation, and we will be sure to continue turning our future assignments in on time. What each team member will be doing as a team. We will continue to communicate and work together effectively. We will work together on outlining the remaining episodes. Each person will partake in the narration of our video, and we will work as a team to complete our management booklet.